In the middle of the desert in the Middle East, one of the biggest building projects in the world is being constructed. The six wealthiest nations in the Middle East have come together to build a more than 2,000 km railway to improve regional connectivity. The project's difficulties are significant, equaled only by the cost associated with overcoming them. Desert sands must be traversed and mountains must be tunneled through. But if it is a success, the railway has the power to unify the Gulf, transform its transportation system, lower carbon emissions, and usher in a brand new period of economic growth. However, it must first get through the political, financial, and logistical obstacles in its path. To understand why the railway is so massive and so important, it's necessary to understand why the railway is being built in the first place. So, let's first start in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia, in February 1981. A group of political and economic leaders from Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, the United Arab Emirates, Qatar, Bahrain, and Oman came together to form the Gulf Cooperation Council or GCC. They all profited greatly from the sale of oil and gas as their economies are so heavily dependent on the oil market. The GCC economy suffered as oil prices fell in the Great Recession of 2008-2009. That is where the railway comes in. To prevent any severe economic downturns, GCC approved a significant railway project in 2009 that would connect each of the six member states and increase work and cooperation between the nations. The project would cost between $100 and $250 billion overall, shared among the participating nations. According to Colorado School of Mines professor Hussein A. Amory, Diversifying the economy of the Gulf states away from oil and gas would help them establish stronger economies. The nation's ports will be connected to manufacturing hubs, which will connect the ports to urban centers, thanks to the railroad lines. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to this channel for more highly informative videos, if you're interested in learning more about multi-billion dollar construction projects throughout the globe. Etihad Railway, an $11 billion, 1,200-kilometer freight and passenger railway spanning the Emirates from the Gulf of Oman to the Persian Gulf, is a crucial component of the network. This first national rail system of the United Arab Emirates is being built in stages. The first stage, which runs 264 kilometers from Abu Dhabi's Habshan and Shah neighborhoods to the port of Ruais, was finished in 2016. However, construction in the desert is not without its challenges. To put it mildly, the working atmosphere is unbelievably difficult. Some building sites only operate at night, when temperatures are closer to 30 degrees Celsius, or 86 degrees Fahrenheit, because it can get so hot during the day. Sand and sandstorms create unstable, challenging terrains. China, Saudi Arabia, and Mauritania are some of the only countries that have constructed mega-projects in the desert, and Etihad had to learn from them. These countries came up with solutions including converting sand dunes to clay over a long period of time, keeping an eye on the changing dunes, and building vegetation-covered barriers to block wind and sand. To help with sand issues, Etihad Rail's locomotive design has a sand filtration system and sand plow. 20 overbridges, 2 underbridges, 10 road underpasses, and 18 smaller underpasses for future usage were all built by Etihad Rail in Stage 1. Additionally, Etihad Rail constructed two factories to create the locally produced raw materials used to create the concrete railway sleepers that serve as the foundation for the rails. A sleeper is 2.6 meters long and 340 kilograms in weight. They are used to stabilize the track and ensure that passenger trains may move smoothly at speeds of up to 200 km per hour by being fastened to the main rails. But at the moment, no passengers are being carried on this inaugural trip. Instead, it transports 110 wagons worth of up to 22,000 tons of powdered sulfur every day. The element is taken from the Abu Dhabi oil resources and processed for export at the port of Ruais where it is then used to make batteries, fertilizers, and fireworks, among other products. As of the middle of 2021, Etihad Rail had transported more than 30 million tons of granulated sulfur for the Abu Dhabi National Oil Company. According to Etihad, 
A single rail trip reduces carbon dioxide emissions by 70 to 80 percent when compared to making comparable journeys by vehicle. China State Construction Engineering Corporation and SK Engineering and Construction of South Korea were given the task of designing and building 139 kilometers of the rail line as part of a $408.4 million deal. Once finished, the network will connect the nation's key industrial ports and commerce hubs, allowing for the yearly transportation of more than 50 million tons of cargo. There is potential for the development of other natural resources, such as iron ore, gold, aluminum, and silver, in Saudi Arabia and the UAE. Even though the Etihad rail network is expanding, the GCC rail project as a whole hasn't always gone as expected. GCC nations temporarily barred Qatar from its organization, casting doubt on its involvement in the railway project. Additionally, the pandemic and the rise in oil prices resulted in logistical hiccups and budget cuts for infrastructure, which pushed back the completion date by years. According to Professor Amory, the vision of Gulf leaders has evolved from being a vision of ambition and occasionally unrealistic ambition to a vision of pragmatism. The actual opening date of the commuter railway has not yet been announced by Etihad, but when it does, it may be difficult to convince a nation that values its automobiles. According to a 2020 poll by Road Safety UAE, only 13% of respondents use public transit, while 83% of respondents depend on their automobiles. However, the railway plays a significant role in Gulf countries' ambitions to diversify their economies and increase their sustainability. A new industry has emerged as a result, creating new jobs. Programs for rail studies training have been developed in Saudi Arabia and the Emirates. On the UAE's 51st National Day, Etihad Rail unveiled a prototype of the passenger train. Upon release of this prototype, an official statement said that it was a privilege for Etihad Rail to serve their nation with this design and that they were honored to be showcasing them on the UAE's National Day of Celebration. The showcase provided the perfect opportunity to give the UAE public and the world a glimpse of the future, by unveiling the first actual prototype passenger train that the public will be able to see inside. Even though the Etihad Rail is set to officially open its operations to commuters by 2030, authorities have yet to reveal an official date. Etihad Rail has said that in 10 years, the number of passengers is expected to reach more than 36.5 million annually. The Emirates may be well known for its oil wealth and opulent buildings, but Etihad Railway offers a glimpse into the long-term plan of Gulf leaders to create a more integrated and connected region. So, what do you think? Will this be the start of an economic powerhouse for the Gulf countries? Share your opinion in the comments below as we would love to know your thoughts about the $100 billion railway in the desert. And if you haven't already, press the subscribe button and hit the notification bell so you never miss an upload. Be sure to like this video and we will see you in the next one.